What's up, my guys, and welcome back. I'm your host, Cody, and this is the Wrestling Report Card. And if you heard that intro, then uh, you might want to switch off and watch something else because this show is terrible. But what wasn't terrible was the 2023 Royal Rumble. Now, what we do on this show is I take a wrestling show like the Rumble. I break down each match. I give it a letter grade. And at the end, I tally them some bitches up to give that show its own report card. So on this Rumble, not only do we have the men's and the women's Royal Rumbles to grade, which were both wonderful we also got the pitch black match between la knight and my guy bray Wyatt, which was sponsored by mountain dew of course and i wish i had a cold dooski and i don't but i got a cold brewski i tell you what brother and then we got the raw women's title on the line as you got bianca belair defending against alexa bliss and then in the main event you got the tribal chief roman reigns defending both of his titles against kevin Owens, and I ain't gonna get too much into detail, but the bloodline left a trail of lifeless bodies tonight. You had a bunch of legends returning in both the Rumbles. Ah, we got a lot to talk about, so without further ado, go ahead, buckle up your seatbelts, and let's get to great. I believe for the first time in Royal Rumble history, we'll be starting the pay-per-view, I mean, uh, premium live event with the Men's Royal Rumble. And before we can even get this son bitch started, my guy Pat McAfee's music kid, and he joined Michael Cole and Corey Graves on the commentary team, which was hilarious all night long. And it's the Royal Rumble, baby. We had legends returning like Edge, the five-time, five-time champion, Booker T. I mean, we gotta see the spinner Rooney, damn it. Other notable moments tonight were when Brock Lesnar came in, wrecked shop, eliminating four guys quickly, and then we had the Gunter and Brock Brock stare down, which you know they're supposed to have that match at WrestleMania. And then Bobby Lashley entered right after Brock. He walked down to the ring. They threw down, and then Bobby threw that big son bitch over the ropes, which pissed Brock off because he was just wrecking shop outside of the ring. We then fast forward to X Condom taking out his dad Rey Mysterio before the match. So we didn't even get to see Ray at all, and that stuck. But we did get to see Logan Paul in at number 29. And my other only knock on this rumble is that he eliminated Seth Rollins. And, I mean, that's just who I wanted to win it all. But, hey, at least we'll probably get a match between those two at WrestleMania. We also got to see a couple of Giants go at it, which ended in Braun Strowman eliminating Omos. Anyways, Logan Paul and Ricochet then had an epic moment where they tore the house down with that spot where they both launched themselves from the ropes and clotheslined each other about 10 feet in the air. I tell you what. Then number 30 hit, and after eight months off from a tour pack, Cody Rhodes made his grand return to the WWE. After eliminating the likes of Braun Strowman and Logan Paul, Cody Rhodes made it all the way down to the final two with Gunter. And as Michael Cole stated, I believe this is the first time ever that the final two entrants in the Royal Rumble have been number one and number 30. And shout out to Gunter for lasting over 70 minutes tonight. But at the end, the American Nightmare keeps the dream alive as he knocked that German son bitch over the top rope to win the 2023 Men's Royal Rumble. And Cody Rhodes will go on to main event Wrestle. Mania, I mean, man, compared to last year's Royal Rumble match, <laughs> I hope y'all don't remember it, but I know you do. That was phenomenal. I'm giving that a flat out A. Those guys really showed up and showed out. I tell you what, I wanted Seth to win, but hey, y'all know Cody's my guy, so I ain't mad at that. We're probably going to get Cody and Roman at the Wrestle the WrestleMania. I don't even know what I'm trying to say half the time, but y'all should know that by now. But at the end of the day, your 2023 Royal Rumble winner is Cody Rose. Let's go. Well, we got to move on because up next, we got the pitch black match. Yes, the one sponsored by Mountain Dew, of course. And it's Bray Wyatt taking on L.A. Knight. Let me talk to you. And okay, this was sick. I love the ring, the barricades, Bray Wyatt's face paint, and most of all, I love the green ropes. That was sick, my guy. And on to the match. Now, on a card with two Royal Rumble matches already on it, of course, we can't have all the matches be too long. Now, after they were throwing down, Bray got slammed through the announce table, but he was able to regroup, and then he hit the sister Abigail to get the one, two, three. And then after the match, when Bray looked up, his face paint just started glowing red, and I guess that moved him into Super Saiyan because my guy was able to eat kendo stick shots like they were serving them out at the Golden Corral, brother. I tell you what. 
After Bray Wyatt chased LA Knight all the way up to the stage, he hit the mandible claw which laid him out. Then, the camera panned over and on top of a 20 foot tall box like structure stood Uncle Howdy. Next thing you know, that crazy son of a bitch launched himself off of it, crashing LA Knight through whatever he was laid out on. And what was even cooler, simultaneously, is that fire erupted all around him. And then afterwards, we saw the rest of the funhouse on top of the box. I mean, holy Shit, if you're gonna sit me, make me sit there and grade all that, whatever we just saw happen, I'm gonna give it a B plus. And for everybody being mean on the internet about this match, just remember, try taking two years off anything that you've done and come back and do what Bray Wyatt did. Y'all know that's my guy, and I'm gonna defend him till the end. Well, speaking of Uncle Howdy, up next, we got Alexa Bliss taking on the Raw Women's Champion, Bianca Bell. Aaron, I tell you what, I love this storyline where it's Bianca's strength taking on Alexa's uh, fiendish ways as of late. And these ladies went on to have a pretty damn good match. After some physical back and forth between the two, Alexa hit her infamous DDT. She went to hit the sister Abigail, but Bianca was able to catch her, counter her with the KOD, and got the 1-2-3 to retain her Raw Women's Championship. And then, after the match, we flash up to the big screen where we got that same trippy video package from Uncle Howdy asking Alexa if she still feels in charge. And then it cut off, leaving Alexa in the ring looking all sorts of bewildered. I mean, what a match. I can't wait to see where all this goes between Bray, Alexa, and Uncle Howdy. If you watch the press conference afterwards, Bray was asked about this. And he said, I don't know, but when it does happen, it's going to be special. So for all that, I'm going to give it a B. Those ladies really showed up and showed out. Keeping it in the women's division up next, we got the women's Royal Rumble. And like I said before, along with the commentary team all night, both these Rumble matches were awesome. We had some huge returns, including a legend or two. So let's get into it. We get this son bitch started off with Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan. But the storyline for the first half of this match was all damage control. Between the three members, they were able to pick up seven eliminations, including Becky Lynch. But thankfully, the man was able to wipe out both EO and Dakota Sky before Bailey stuck up behind and threw Becky over the top rope. Michelle McCool then came in, Uggs and all, and she hit the Styles Clash. She had a good run until Rhea Ripley was finally able to eliminate her. But before that, this ring was full of big sweaty chicks slapping chick meat. I tell you what, at one point you had Rhea, Raquel, Michelle McCool, Tamina Piper, and Lacey Evans all in the ring just throwing down. And then before the countdown even hit at 30, for the first time in over a year, we get the return of the monstrous Nia Jax. And I don't even care that they messed up her intro. Let's just get it, baby. But by God, Rhea was able to hit that son bitch with the riptide. And then it did take all the other 11 women. But they were able to eliminate Nia Jax out of the ring over the top rope. We then get down to the final three, which included the first two ladies, Rhea and Liv, as well as Asuka. And by God, we got all three ladies on the apron. Asuka goes to hit Rhea with the miss, but she dug, which sent it flying all over Liv's face. At this point, Rhea took advantage. She eliminated Asuka, but somehow Liv was still able to land the cold breaker, almost knocking Rhea off. But as Liv went over to pry Rhea's fingers, Rhea managed to hook her with her legs and sent her ass flying onto the floor. And Rhea Ripley, who entered at number one, outlasting 29 other women, picking up a handful of eliminations along the way to join Cody Rhodes as your 2023 Women's Royal Rumble winner. Man, like I said, what a match right there from those 30 ladies. I'm going to sit there and give that an A. Mine is I'm really proud of them. I think it's only the sixth year they've done it. I mean, they deliver time after time after time. Well, y'all know the drill, what part of the show it is. That's enough of the talk because it's time for the main event. It's Roman Reigns defending both of his titles against Kevin Owens. And don't forget, before this pay-per-view started, Roman specifically requested that only Sami Zayn and the Wiseman are to accompany him ringside for this match. Now, with Roman already downing Sami Zayn's loyalty, Kevin Owens showed up to the Alamo Dome in a Sami Zayn Forever shirt. So yeah, there's quite a bit going on here before this match. I'll tell you what, brother. Anyways, after the pyro, after the intros and all that, we finally get this son bitch started and these two were just throwing down. KO struck first when he hit a frog splash from the apron down onto the floor onto the champ. Then Roman answered with that infamous power on, but 
KO kicked out. Then Owens answered with a German suplex. Then boom, Roman's hit his first Superman punch. However, once again, KO kicked out. And I tell you what, the look on Sami Zayn's face was interesting. Yeah, that's the word we're going with for now. Anyways, Roman tried to end it all with the spear, but Owens was able to get out of the way, sending the champ crashing into the ring post, and before he could react, KO was flying off the ropes, almost ending Roman's reign with a beautiful swan tom bomb. Next thing you know, boom, it's Roman with a spear. Wasn't enough. Roman loaded up for a second one. Owens countered. Owens then went for the stunner, but Roman avoided sending KO crashing into the ref. KO then answered with a pop-up powerbomb and had the champ down for well over the three count. But remember, there's no ref. So Roman took full advantage and hit KO with the low blow. Then he called for Sammy to get him the chair. And although Sammy showed hesitation, he threw that son of a bitch in. But that hesitation damn near cost the champ the match as KO was able to hit the stunner. And thankfully for Sammy, somehow the champ was able to not only kick out, but he hit his second spear. Once again, though, KO kicked out that son of a bitch. Owen Smarley then rolled out of the ring, or so he thought, because then here came Roman hitting the court and he hit a monstrous spear crashing KO through the barricade. Next thing you know, we all witnessed Roman Reigns try to murder KO on live TV as he sent that son of a bitch in school crashing into the steel steps not once but twice. Then Roman drug KO's body into the ring. He hit another spear. I done lost count by now. And he got the one, two, three, and still your reigning undisputed universal heavyweight champion of the world, Roman Reigns. Put your ones up, damn it. Well, after the match, the rest of the bloodline came down to the ring. Jay went to Don Sammy Uso with his own personal bloodline lay, but Roman stopped him. And then he ordered both the Usos to deliver the 1D to Kevin Owens, who was already like dead. They then drug him over in the corner, strapped a chair around his head, and Solo hit him with the Rikishi. We then witnessed Paul Heyman reach into his pocket and pull out two pair of handcuffs which he gifted to the tribal chief. He then ordered the bloodline to handcuff KO to the ring, both of his arms, and the Usos went on to have themselves a super kick party. I keep forgetting I can't do that. Then, with steel chair in hand, Roman walks over to the lifeless Kevin Owens. He was about to start going to work on him, but then Sami Zayn's dumbass stepped in and stopped him. Without even looking up, Roman just reached that chair out towards Sami, who looked at him and said, I don't want it. I don't want to do it. But I don't think no was an option, my guy. Roman then told him, if you weren't with the bloodline, you'd still be doing jackass shit. I mean, he... <laughs> Roman was going in. So reluctantly, Sammy grabbed the chair, but still wouldn't swing that son of a bitch. Roman then started shoving him around, slapping him in the face. But once Roman turned his back, it wasn't KO who got the chair shot. It was Roman Reigns. Sammy Zayn took that chair to Roman Reigns back. I mean, the whole bloodline was just standing there in disarray. They didn't know what to do. But then Jimmy Uso and Solo just started laying a smackdown on Sami Zayn. With the entire crowd now chanting for Jay Uso, who was just standing over in the corner... Conflicted. My guy was conflicted. He then did the unthankful as Jay Uso just dropped down and then rolled out of the ring. Holy shit. So whatever. Roman just went up, picked up that steel chair, and just started wearing Sammy's ass out with it. He then grabbed that same lay that Jay Uso was about to don Sammy with, walked over atop Sammy, and started ripping it one by one over the ex honorary Uso before Roman, Solo, Jimmy, and the wise man walked off leaving two lifeless bodies in the ring. I tell you what, this is why I stand by saying Roman's title reign is just, I mean, it's one of the best we've seen in a long time. He's the Don, he's the tribal chief, and if you cross him, you are gonna get your ass tore up. I mean, for the main event match, and everything that preceded, and everything that's gonna be from the fallout from this, it's getting an A+. Plus, I mean, that low kid was kind of hard to watch, but that's why Roman is who he is, baby. Well, y'all know what time of the show it is. We got all the grades in. Now, let's take a look at that report card. After tallying everything up, we came out with a final letter grade of an A-. That's right, a 92%. Let's 
go. Well, I want to thank everybody that does tune in. Feel free to go like the video. You can even comment. Let everybody know how dumb I am. Trust me. I agree. Or you can even go subscribe to the channel. That would be awesome. Also, go check out my guy, OG Bobby Knifehawk on SoundCloud. He does all my music for me. And that's all I got to say today. So I hope all you folks stay safe out there and have a nice day.